the solar powered house number planter box. Ooh, well, solar what? powered. <laughs> Sounds fancy now. We just made this planter box with a post for our house numbers and we used the glow forge to cut out some acrylic and we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? A welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? Of course you do. That's why you're watching. And these cool cats know we do it every Friday. This week, we're making a planter with a post for our house letters. Goes in the back. Yes, so we've had challenges with some of our delivery drivers. We, our house faces the road and our garage faces an alley. And sometimes the GPS either takes you down the front or it takes you down the back. And we've had so many deliveries when they come down the back, there's no way to tell which house is which. They just get close and they drop off our stuff. <laughs> With Home Depot, we found an order. Two days later, three houses down just sitting in their driveway. And we had to go at like eight o'clock at night with a dolly to pick it up. <laughs> so we looked a little shady. <laughs> and then groceries, they will say, oh, they've been delivered. And then you have to find, well, they'll send you a picture sometimes. And you just basically have to find where it is. It could be a neighbor's house. They could be just behind the garage and we didn't know they were back there. So what we want to do is put this little planter on either side of the garage that has our house number so that they can figure out where to drop off the groceries. <laughs> <laughs> or our deliveries or whatever. It stopped this cruel game of where's Waldo with, yeah. <laughs> with our food. <laughs> Step one, we're going to gather all of our supplies. We borrowed these plans from Tabitha at Fresh Mommy Blog, and there were some tweaks um, from Amy at Homemade Haven. So we used both of theirs to come up with our version, and we have tweaked it even further. So <laughs> <laughs> just some tips and tricks. <laughs> but these will get you started, and I'll put a link to these in our description. We need a one two by two, one two by four, but not even like the whole thing. You could probably just get a four foot four. 1x4s, a 4x4, four four, that's the most expensive thing in the cart. A piece of scrap plywood, 3 quarter inch. We're going to put a cap on ours that's got a solar light in it. And a hanger for our uh, house numbers. Step 2! Now we're going to make all of our cuts. We're going to cut these 1x4s down to 15 and 3 quarter inches. We're going to need 16 of them. And then we're going to cut the 2x2 two two down to 15 inches. We're going to need four of those. So we're not going to make all of our cuts, but most of our cuts. <laughs> and how do you think we should make these cuts? What tool should we use? I'm going to use my pocket saw! <laughs> Is this joke getting worn out? Is it getting old? Kim said maybe I should retire this joke about my pocket saw. <laughs> I still think it's funny. <laughs> to make all of our cuts and to make sure these cuts are uniform, we're going to put up a stop block at 15 and 3 quarter inches. I don't have an arm on my miter saw long enough. I'm going to clamp my miter saw down to the bench and then I'm going to clamp my stop block down to the bench at 15 and 3 quarter inches away. Step three. Now we're gonna start the assembly. We're gonna start by making the four sides. At first we're gonna to have to put a whole bunch of pilot holes in there so that we don't split the wood. And we're gonna countersink them with this pilot hole countersink bit. Like two on each board. So first we have to measure it out. Just line up a bunch of them. Gonna take one of the other boards, line it up right on the edge, draw a faint little line. Now I got these little scraps from when I made all these cuts. I'm just gonna use this, I'm gonna place it at the top of each board, show where it crossed the line, at the bottom of each board, show where it crosses the line. On the other side of each board, we're gonna Stack those two pieces of scraps, place them at the edge, and draw a line. 
And do the same with the little piece of scrap. Top and bottom. So that's an inch and a half. Top, bottom. Start drilling. use sides from the other ones to space them out. That was just lining up the edge. Then I'm going to come in with those shallow pilot holes. I'm going to screw those down to the 2x2s. Now we're going to semi-assemble it just so that we'll know how to cut the top because we got to do a miter cut on the top. So we're just going to mock assemble it. Just put a screw in the top and a screw in the bottom so we'll be able to measure it. Alright, let's measure the top. Inside corner to inside corner. Alright, that's 12. Pocket saw won't go all the way through a 1x4 at the 45, so down to the big saw. Meet you there. Back with all my little pieces with all my 45s. Looks great. Now we're gonna stain it. So now I'm gonna take out those screws. I just put two in each side and take those out. And we're gonna stain it. Step four. Now we're gonna put our four sides together. We're gonna make the box. So kind of like we mocked it up, but we're gonna put screws in all of the holes inch and five eighths and I'm going to do it upside down so it's lined up all right that's what we got we got a box <laughs> Well, it's upside down. We're gonna add the plywood. Oof, piece of scrap plywood. Like a Ooh, glove. Perfect fit. Damn, it's got a bottom. It's getting heavy. Step five. Now we're gonna post it. <laughs> we're gonna use these 15 inch two by fours that I cut some pocket holes into. And we're gonna attach them to the bottom of the post. Then we're gonna slide the whole thing in and use the pocket holes to tack it to the bottom. <laughs> that is something. Phew. All right, we'll put the post in the box. Woo, super tight fit. Get in there, little post. Yeah, Want a hammer or something? What can I do? 
a little wiggling and jiggling. Yep, that one's out. Okay. Oh. Step six. Now we're gonna add the liner so that we can actually put plants in it. We're gonna create like a moat around the pole. We're gonna fold the Yeah, so this, this plant liner. sheet is folded in half, and then we're gonna tuck the folded side right down in there. This way it doesn't get the post wet. Keeps it out of the keeps it drier anyway. We're gonna tuck one side in the other. Now we're going to use the top frame, all those little 45s that we had to cut on the big Microsoft. We're going to put them on the liner and we're going to nail it down with a one and a quarter inch brad nail. The nail, not the guy. I messed, <laughs> I messed my own joke up. <laughs> Now we're going to bunch the middle up together and go find a zip tie and zip tie the middle together. Step seven. Now we're going to add the little topper and we're going to give it a hanger so that it actually can hang our numbers. Kind of excited about this little topper. It's, it's a copper topper. Well, yes, and it's solar powered. So hopefully in the dark, you'll be able to see the numbers and the whole thing. It's going to look so nice. Step eight. Now we're gonna give it some numbers. I'm gonna take this piece of acrylic over to my Glowforge and cut out our numbers for our uh, house numbers. The whole point of this thing. His whole point, my whole point. Well, I guess to get the numbers. My whole big thing was the planter, but he was, this is like the whole exciting part of the project for him right here. He did all this to get to this, <laughs> to use the Glowforge to cut out these numbers. <laughs> gotta use my tools. Yes. <laughs> Got these big tools, I gotta use them. So I'll meet you over there in the Glowforge app. Kim sent me a pin that she wanted me to use for the house numbers. So I'm gonna borrow this image, bring it into Photoshop, remove their numbers, put in my own numbers, save it as a JPEG, open that JPEG in Adobe Illustrator, I'm going to do an image trace. I go deeper into how to set up a Glowforge file in an earlier video. I'll link to it here. I'm going to remove the background. Give the image a red stroke because I like red for cuts. I'm going to export this out as an SVG. I'm going to import that same SVG into the Glowforge app. Size the image. Select thin acrylic from the materials menu. Set the layer to cut and hit print. Now we picked up this acrylic from Amazon. This stuff smells real bad. Even with the machine exhaust and an inline exhaust, we had to evacuate the craft room. I mean, it smelled bad. Now maybe the Glowforge stuff is better and it doesn't stink, but I wouldn't recommend using the stuff we used. Numbers are all hung. What do you guys think? Not too shabby, huh? 
looks pretty classy. <laughs> we haven't seen what it looks like at night yet though, so. I haven't seen the lights glow. If you guys like this video, give us a like. You be sure to share it. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe because we do this every week. So you should tick that bell. And then maybe watch uh, this video right here. Or her video. <laughs> watch either one. And we'll see you guys next week.